Hello, impressive souls, and welcome to a new episode of Live Your Impressivity Show. I'm Alex Baditza, I'm your host, and today we're talking about journaling for healing trauma. I am joined by my special guest, Christine Bergsma. Christine is the founder and CEO of Journaling Through, a company specializing in empowerment concepts, self-care techniques, and holistic healing through state-of-the-art guided journaling. Christine is an award-winning screenwriter and course developer. After her legal studies, she focused her energy on combining her love of writing, humanitarian efforts and business knowledge to create a series of guided journals that focus on personal growth after life-altering events. She continues to collaborate with experts in different fields to create workshops and seminars as a valuable resource while sharing her expertise through digital channels globally. Let's meet Christine. Hello, Christine, and welcome to Live Your Impressivity Show. How are you? Hi, Alex. Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing really well. Thank you. What about you? I'm really well, thank you. And I'm really excited to have you here on our show and to hear more about what you're doing, because I know that we connected through our mutual interest for journaling. And I really love also that you are diving deeper into a very specific niche. And I cannot wait to hear more about it and also to share with the audience. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, <laughs> it's a pleasure. Thank you. So I was uh, sharing earlier with um, everyone listening that you are, um, your focus is on holistic healing with guided journaling. So this is a very, very specific niche of journaling and I absolutely love it because, you know, I love the healing power of writing and expressive writing and the therapeutic part. So first of all, I would like to know what is holistic healing? Oh, that's an excellent question. Nobody has asked that before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my best. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so throughout my research and my own life experience, I discovered that, and this is just the discovery of something that already existed. So I didn't, you know, <laughs> like discover it like the electricity, which I guess was also there. But so holistic healing is the trifecta. So if something is bothering your mind, it's going to affect your spirit. It's going to affect your body. So if you take one of those out of the equation, the other two will be off. So that is what our guided journals do. They sort of balance all three aspects of what it means to be a holistic being. And I think, you know, especially with emotions and things like that, people can easily say, oh, you know, like this is like a bad emotion or something like that. And it's like, no, because it's part of you. So you need to deal with that you know, so that it doesn't affect your body, mind, spirit. I absolutely love this and I couldn't agree more, especially because I think that's, you know, such a powerful way of looking at things because we are complex human beings and whatever happens in our life, it will definitely have an effect on all three levels, you know, and I, I like to see it as a triangle, uh, mind, body, and soul. And it's really, really interesting that, you know, you are bringing it also into this part of journaling and especially journaling for healing. So tell me more a little bit about the, the stages of healing. Usually uh, what you see with people coming to your workshops or uh, getting your journals? What is usually the process of healing that they go through? Right. And that's a very valid point because some people, you know, for example, if you were dealing with loss and grief, you could have had somebody pass away or die. I know they're, they're saying we should say that, not pass away. <laughs> like maybe 10 years ago, but it's still affecting you today. So it doesn't really matter time frame wise where you are at in your healing journey. I think where it comes to people, they come to the workshop, they buy the journals, when they realize that they can't do this anymore or they, they really need outside help. They can't do this by themselves anymore. The YouTube videos aren't doing what they're supposed to, or, you know, or maybe, you know, their psychologist or their counselor suggests, you know, maybe write something down, but it's so over overwhelming when you're in that state if something first happened for instance and you are overwhelmed and it's too traumatic you just don't know where to start so that is one starting point and then the other one is you know if you have run out of ideas on how to really get over this so it's really a broad spectrum of people 
and mm. their journeys. Yeah, I get it. And I think especially because, you know, you are also addressing different situations and different um, aspects of um, healing. And you already mentioned grief and loss. And, um, you know, I know that you have journals for cancer and for uh, infertility, for pregnancy, for emotional eating. And I think for each of these situations, there is a different aspect of how we deal with it emotionally. And also we're all different, right? And we all go through grief and healing in a very different way and in a very unique way. Absolutely. And, and to your point, that's how the journals were created as well. So um, one of the people who recently attended a workshop, she said she didn't realize that this is what it was about. So it's really just you writing your story. I have nothing personal in those journals whatsoever. I just give you the tools on how to do it yourself. So exactly to your point, Alex, is, you know, it's your story. You're supposed to write it. I just help you through that. Yeah, that's a very, very interesting point. And actually, could you share with us a little bit more on the, the process that they go through when they actually get a journal and they sit down and they start writing? Are there any guiding questions that you take them through or how does it happen? Absolutely. So the journals are developed to take you from point A to point B. So, for example, if we take infertility, we you know, have a person who would really like to be a mom. So we start with prompts on saying, what's your finances like? How much time are you spending on this? You know, trying to be a mom, trying to be a mom. What other things are it's affecting? Like your relationship with your husband. Then we deal with guilt. Then we deal with, you know, shame, jealousy. So we go through all these emotions that at the end of the journal, when you are done and when you have completed it, we suggest that you do it in sequence because it was developed in sequence, but it's your journal. If you feel today that you don't want to do it in sequence, then skip to the end and see if it works for you, right? But then in the end, you know, um, our aim is for you to heal. So our aim is for you to accept whatever journey you went through through this journal, whether it be, you know, being okay with not being a mom, being okay with, you know, continuing IVF or exploring other options. So it's really so open-ended, but it does ground you in those psychological principles of being, you know, okay and that is really what we are aiming for. I really love that. And actually, this uh, brought to my mind another question. What would you say healing is? Like, when do people actually get to a place where they feel healed? So after they have gone through accepting their emotions and they have gone through coping with all of these things that come up during the journaling uh, sessions and when they sit down with their journal and they actually go through it, when do you think they start reaching that point of healing? So for instance, someone who is listening and they're now maybe going through something difficult, uh, when would be a time when you know they start feeling better, they start feeling the shift? Right, and that is such a great point because I had to figure that out for myself too. So my definition of healing is when you feel these emotions come on, but they're not nearly as intense as they were and they don't last for as long. So you might see something, you might think it, mm, okay, and then you move on and then you know you've healed. Whether, you know, or conversely, if you're like, oh, this is so heavy, this is so intense, it's taking me three days to get over this, you know, baby shower invitation or whatever, right? Then you know you, you still have some work to do. Whereas if you get that invitation in the mail and you're struggling, then you're like, okay, I see it, I acknowledge it, I'll, I'm going to go and be okay. Mm, I love that. And I think this is really powerful for understanding that it's a process. It's not just moving from A to B and, you know, just skipping, uh, like, just like that, you know, like, <laughs> you not a light switch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it's a process. You kind of start, uh, feeling more ease. You start feeling, you know, maybe less overwhelmed when you think about it, when you think about the situation and it's kind of, you know, um, bringing you back the power that you have over yourself and rather than the emotions taking over and controlling everything. 
absolutely, absolutely. And and moving into that obsessiveness, right? Like you can then focus on other things that is wonderful in your life and really start thriving and living the life that you want. Yeah, that's so beautiful. So in your experience, do people come and get journals for themselves? Do they acknowledge that they are in a position to you know, I need to do something different. I need to um, start writing and go through these emotions. Or is it someone who comes in and buys it for their dear ones? Like, for instance, I know that, you know, let's say I have a friend who goes through something. Uh, they go through emotional eating or they're going through separation. And I know that this journal is going to help them and I'm going to buy it for them. Do you think this is something that happens usually, or is the person who is actually struggling uh, getting to a point where they acknowledge it and come to, you know, I want to start journaling because I know it's going to help me. That's a great question because more often than not, people buy it for others and then they realize, oh, this is so great. And then they end up buying one for themselves as well. <laughs> so it is always easier to think of other people first and sort of, yeah, they have problems and they need to figure it out. Right. And then in the end, they're like, oh, 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 OK, I should buy this for myself. <laughs> But one um, set of journals sort of that um, I created is the, the cancer one. So it's breast cancer is for the patient. So obviously, if you don't have breast cancer, I mean, you can definitely do it to see what they're going through. But that is why we created one for the friends and family and then one for the professional caregivers. So you can, in, in essence, buy one for yourself and for the other people that are all dealing with the tr traumatic event as sort of a holistic, you know, everybody can have their own journal that is specifically for them in this specific circumstance. I think that's really great because this way you kind of see the journey of one person from different perspectives. So it's actually the person who's going through that situation, then there's uh, the close members of the family and friends, and then the professional caregivers. And I think each and every one has different emotions, especially depending on the relationship that they have with the person who's actually involved directly. And so how is it from a journaling perspective uh, different to address these emotions? Because it's a different perspective in terms of how they are um, you know, involved in that experience. How is it from a journaling perspective? What should they expect to, to see in that journal? So I think especially for the journals, I place a lot of emphasis on boundaries. So that is one specific for the cancer one. You know, um, for example, if you have known somebody who, who has cancer, they're not going to want to see you every single day because they are dealing with their own emotions. So you can decide either you're going to take that personally or you're going to say, okay, this is their journey right? So I think that is how I structured these journal entries to say, you know, they're not going to eat everything that you give them because they're going through chemo. Like, you know, you know that it's healthy for you, but you're not in their body. So you need to place that boundary and bring it back to yourself and say, what am I dealing with, right? Or on the flip side, if you have a cold, then you think, oh, you know, like I have a cold, but, at, you know, somebody else has it worse. It's like, no, but you still have a cold. This is still your body. So you still need to deal with this what is happening with you right now so that is how I structured the journals to really focus on you know this is where you are at as this participant in this trauma or in this life-altering event right the same with the caregivers you can't be a bleeding heart for everybody because you need to be in your professional sort of, you know, profession, I guess, in your career, you need to be there for people to guide them and to help them. But you can't, you know, do stuff for them in that sense, they need to start doing things for themselves as well. So again, that boundaries, those, you know, what is everybody's role in this? And that is sort of how I, I moved in. Oh, I love that. So could you give us maybe some examples of questions? I love that you mentioned boundaries and actually focusing on each person's personal experience and personal emotions and understanding that it's not selfish to put yourself first and to understand that you also have to be okay with yourself first in order to be able to 
help your friend or your uh, close family member to go through this. So could you maybe give us some examples of journaling questions or prompts for this? Absolutely. For, for the cancer one specific or just in general? <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe just in general. And if you have maybe one question for or a prompt for cancer specific. <laughs> sure, sure. So for the cancer one specific, it would be a, a prompt that says, you know, um, if you are the person that has cancer. So I would say, just like they do in a hospital, you have visiting hours. So find a piece of paper and write down visiting hours and stick it to your door and do not care. <laughs> Say, these are my visiting hours. <laughs> text me or text this person and then I will see you. So because people, you know, they all want to come and sometimes, you know, we would like to believe that everybody has good intentions, but other people are just curious and they don't even care, right? So it's like, you don't want any of those energies. So that is one prompt that is a very active prompt to say, you know, write down a schedule and stick it on your front door and call right. it a day <laughs> and wow. just be yes. with it, right? I love that. I love that because I think it's also just being very clear on, you know, people not overstepping your personal experience because then you actually need time to process your own feelings and emotions so you know people sometimes can be over protective and over caring <laughs> exactly and it's like okay i'm good now please leave. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean of course they, they come with the best intentions uh but you know it has to be also from your experience knowing when to say you know what i need my, my space to, to deal with this Exactly, exactly. And then usually with, with things like this, any life altering event, it's very intense in the beginning. And then it sort of tapers off because people are starting their own lives. So for instance, it's, you know, it's not even cancer related, but pregnancy or, you know, everybody is there when the baby's little. And then what? Then people just leave and then they forget that, you know, you haven't slept in three months or whatever, right? <laughs> So I think that is important too, that the journal actually guides you to say, okay, so after the intensity of the experience, how are you going to sustainably have self-care support? Do you know where to go if you need help? We have a section in the pregnancy journal for postpartum depression too, right? To say, these are the things that you need to know going forward because now it's all going to be great in the first week and then what you know three months later you can't get up in the morning then your journal would be like oh i remember i need to call someone yeah i think that's also very important and again it's part of setting the boundaries and really just acknowledging that absolutely and knowing where to go get help i think that's a big part of it too right Yes, that's actually a very, very important thing. So for instance, let's say that someone, um, maybe some of our listeners know someone in their close circle who are going through either uh, emotional eating or, I don't know, maybe infertility issues, something that is uh, making them feel like, you know, I want to help this person and I want to be there for them, but I don't know how. What do you think would be the best approach should they go and first talk to them? Should they get them a journal? Should they be there in, uh, you know, maybe also get some help for themselves and guidance on how to be there for that close friend or uh, close family member? Oh, yeah, I think that's a really, really good idea. Um, maybe get yourself okay first so that you know what you're dealing with. Because if you're sporadic and the other person's sporadic, then it's just going to be this energy of, you know, <laughs> sporadicness. And, and you don't want to ruin a friendship because of something that somebody is going through either, right? Because you have your pure heart intentions. So I would recommend, like, maybe just do an alignment journal because that one is for everybody and it deals with everything. Of normal life. It's not a specific life-altering event. So maybe go through those journaling prompts or even your impressivity journal, right? Like do one that is just, you know, 
for more of a holistic one, not specific. And then once you figure out, you know, what you want out of this relationship, what you want out of your life, because then you can go speak to that person from a very calm and balanced foundation. And I have never heard anybody who rejected a journal and a, and a bunch of flowers and some chocolates or something like that if they're going through a hard time. Right? <laughs> right. I'm like, <laughs> please tell me, or a candle, you know, if chocolates isn't your thing, but you know, make it really beautiful and just say, you know, thinking of you, that's it. Like you can just do that. And I would be hard pressed to think that somebody would reject that as a gift. <laughs> Actually, I think that's really, really great. And I think it's also a very good first step because, you know, in very many times, you know, when I know, for instance, when someone close to me goes through a loss in their family, there are moments when I don't really know what to say to them. I feel like, well, if I pick up the phone and call them, like, do they really need to hear from me right now? Because they're already dealing with whatever they're going through. They have their own emotions. They already have a lot of things going on. Do they really want to hear from me? Or should I, um, you know, somehow find a way to communicate to this person that, you know, I'm here for you. Just take your time and figure, you know, figure out what you need at, in your own time. There's no pressure, but I'm just here for you. And maybe, you know, if you need to journal about it, you don't need to come to talk to me. Should we somehow remind people that journaling is an option? What do you think is the best way to help them in this healing process? Absolutely. Yeah, that's such a great point because, you know, you're sort of frazzled too. And I think every time that a life altering circumstance happened, it brings it back to our own emotions, our own mortality, our own idea that we can get sick at any time. Like we could, you know, so we do take that personally a little bit too. So I think you're absolutely right. And then we don't know how to handle the other <laughs> situation, right? Or if we've never even heard of it, and then we have no idea how to deal with it that way either. So I I think journaling is so important and I mean if you if you send somebody a journal and you just say thinking of you right that also takes the pressure off them for talking or or you know from talking about it to you and don't take it personally because they're dealing with it but you're giving them this outlet you're giving them this beautiful valuable piece that they can do on their own time, they can lock it up in a cupboard so nobody can see what their thoughts are, but you are helping them, right, in a very substantial way. So I, I think you're absolutely right, you know, and then I don't know, maybe, you know, every two weeks just say, hey, thinking of you, that's it. If they don't reply, then they don't reply. If they reply, then, you know, it's an open invitation. But I do think it's important for people to sort of push that comfort zone too, not to be pressing to say, hey, I want to help you. I want to do this. I want to, because it's already overwhelming. Just say, thinking of you, heart emoji or something, <laughs> right? And with the journal accompanied that. I love that. I love that because I feel like you're respecting the other person's space as well, but you're kind of, you know, looking at, you know, here is a helping hand. If you need it, you don't need to take it. This is a journal. Yeah. And you can, you can use it at your own pleasure. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and they might not even use it right away. They might, you know, use it a month from today or a year from today, but at least, you know, they would see that you value them and you have given them something of, of substance. Yes, I absolutely love this. So in terms of journaling questions and journaling prompts, because I know that all your journals are guided and you have, um, you, you know, you take people through this whole process. Is there a question or a prompt that uh, someone could repeat on a daily basis and journal around it, especially during maybe the first period of healing when it's super intense? Or should they have different questions to reflect on every day, just that they feel the progress, they feel the, the every step of the journey? Hmm. That's a great question. So the journals aren't actually structured for a one-time liner <laughs> or a one journaling prompt. It is structured more in a every day you're moving on to something new or every time you journal because it doesn't have to be every single day either. I think that's another thing people put so much pressure on themselves. Oh no, I have to do it every day. I'm like, you don't <laughs> just do it regularly, you know, start and before you know it, you will <laughs> because it's so awesome. But um, yeah, so the journals weren't actually structured, but there are mantras in there where you can write your own mantra 
and you can use that every morning and you can use that as sort of, or something that you discovered in the journal. I ask that prompt. So I say, you know, what is, is there something that you discovered that you want to write down and stick on your wall or something like that? So that, that is in there. I love that. Yes. I think that's important to allow people the, the space to just pick something that is specific to them and unique for them. And that really caught their attention and helped them. So I think that's a really good point. Thank you. <laughs> so do you think journaling is for your mind or for your soul? <laughs> hmm. Does it have to be one or the other? <laughs> I think it comes from your mind and your soul. And then it goes physically into the pen. And then we have the trifecta. <laughs> Yes, I love that. <laughs> That's a fun question. I like that. Hmm, I'm going to give it some more thought. <laughs> awesome, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll get back to you. I'll yeah. put it on social. <laughs> Absolutely, would love to, to hear more on this, yeah. So actually speaking of the trifecta, because, you know, we talked about the how it comes from the mind, it goes through your soul, and you put it in writing with your hand, which is really brilliant. And I absolutely love this because it's the perfect process to actually involve the whole uh, body and, you know, the, the whole system that we have. So I know that you also have a project on digital journaling, and I would like to know more about the benefits of digital journaling versus handwriting, because I'm a very big fan of handwriting, and I always talk to people about handwriting. And, you know, I know that we live in this very fast-paced uh, society where, you know, it's easier to type out rather than pick up a pen and start writing. But I would love to know if there are some benefits also to digital journaling and how can this help them in their journey with healing? For sure. Thank you so much. And I think, you know, m myself, I handwrite. I hand journal, <laughs> right? But what I have heard from um, people who either buy the journal or would like to start journaling, because the subject matter is so intense and so extremely personal and private, they didn't feel comfortable having a journal lying around while they were dealing with their process. So they wanted something password protected. So the only way that I could do that is to do it on a digital thing. So that is why we created the digital one is for that extreme private conversations that you have with yourself and we have it encrypted so we can see that you wrote something but it's all like you know little characters we can't see what you write because we put so many you know for your own privacy as well and it's nobody's business what you write so if that is a concern <laughs> but that is really the digital part of it was was the privacy and where people just want it and even if they're waiting and say they forgot their journal at home and you're waiting in a doctor's office or you're waiting on the train or whatever right it's easy just to be on your phone and you know typing versus writing and it's all <laughs> over <laughs> the place so that was just the feedback that we got and that is why we created the digital so do you think that digital actually goes better with people who prefer free writing because then they don't have the questions and the prompts do they um get to free write in the digital journal is it more for those who are just like oh i got this uh, feeling or this aha moment, this breakthrough, and I need to type it out right now. <laughs> yes, so we do have that. So we actually have three sections in the digital journal. So it is a free journal, exactly to your point, where it's like, oh, eureka moment. I need to write it down. Eureka. There we go. <laughs> and um, then we also have guided journaling prompts that I just wrote there just for everyday sort of journaling. And then we have the premium journals on there as well. So you can do all of the intense ones on the digital one as well. So it has all three. I love it. So there's a little bit for everyone. A little bit for everyone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> awesome. So I want to also go back a little bit to your background. I've been doing a little bit of research and I saw that you are an award winner screenwriter. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and I would like to know more a little bit about the process of screenwriting and how 
if there are any similarities with journaling. How is it similar to journaling? Alex, I like you so much right now. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I started, so I, I studied um, law. And then when I got to Canada, I couldn't practice law. And then I decided, you know what? I've always loved writing. I always love stories. I've always loved the written word. So I took some screenwriting courses. Again, did really well. Thank you so much. Yes. So we won awards. We, you know, did short films and everything. And then I decided, you know what? I should move everything that I learned from screenwriting and move it into these guided journals. As in, you are the protagonist of your story. Here is your obstacle. Here is what you learn. Here is your obstacle. Here is what you learn. Here is your goal. Ta-da. Until the end. <laughs> So the similarities are sort of exact. <laughs> wow. I really, really love this because it's like a reflection, basically. So instead of writing about uh, another character going through all of these um, series of obstacles and uh, lessons and understanding their transformation, you are kind of reflecting it back on yourself, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, so you are the hero. You are the superhero of your own story. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And how do you think people resonate with that? Do you think that, for instance, in the healing process, you know, for journaling purposes, would you say that an exercise like, you know, put yourself in the shoes of another character or write about your story from another character's perspective or, you know, imagine that you are... Um, I don't know, let's say that a woman who's going through, this just came up right now. <laughs> um, let's say a woman who's going through maybe infertility uh, problems. And, you know, we ask her in a journaling prompt, you know, imagine that you're a superwoman. How would you deal with this situation or what emotions came up for you or, you know, things like this. Do you think that would be something working for them in this healing process? Would it be too much or would it be helpful? Oh, I think absolutely. And there is a prompt that is similar to that. I love Superwoman. But <laughs> the uh, so saying that, you know, what is a role model? What type of role models do you have in your life? What type of attributes do those role models what speaks to you about that? How can you incorporate that in your life? What do you already have in your life that you know resonates with those type of role models? So you're absolutely right. That is a part of it to say, you know, make yourself a bit bigger, <laughs> you know, see things of it from a wider perspective. Absolutely. And so on the flip side to say, you know, um, for example, is there a person that you think should not be worthy of having children? Right. So then you bring that like antagonist energy of, you know, because it's very screenwriting too, right? To say, this person doesn't deserve to be a mom, really. <laughs> How is that affecting you? Right. Mm -hmm. So you always bring it back to the you. How is your perception on somebody else's journey affecting you personally? Yes. Wow. That's, I think that's really powerful because it kind of, gives you a different perspective. So instead of just feeling like, oh, there's so much pressure on me, but if you look at your role models and how would your role models deal with this situation? And yeah, I think that's, that's a really good point. And especially, you know, while we were looking at screenwriting and journaling and they kind of come together really, really beautifully. <laughs> yes, yes, they do. <laughs> I love it. Have they all have chapters. Yeah. <laughs> and in the end, the good will win. <laughs> yeah, that's so awesome. I love it. I love it. Um, so at the end, I have three questions, a challenge with uh, three questions that I uh, want to invite all of my guests to take. But before this, um, I want to first say thank you for joining this show and for being part of Live Your Impressivity Show and for everything that you do in helping people heal and going through the process and navigating their emotions with journaling, because this is really, really powerful and so very much needed. Oh, thank you, Alex. And thank you so much for everything that you do as well. I think, you know, um, 
absolutely community over competition. The more people we can have writing, the more people we can spread the word, the better. So thank you so much. And thank you for having me on. This was so much fun. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that. So before I go into the three questions, is there a question that you would have liked me to ask you today that I didn't ask? Mm. I think you have covered absolutely everything. I think you are such an amazing host. Thank you. You could have just asked, you know, if we can visit sometime in real life. That would yes, be that's a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> we'll meet up somewhere and then we'll just journal. We'll do a travel journal or something. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love this. I love this. You know, I mean, I don't even know how many miles away we are, but I know I have never been to Canada before. I don't know what kind of visas I need, but I would love to come and visit you. <laughs> and I would love to come visit you. So I think that that would be my question. Can I come visit you soon? <laughs> Absolutely. Anytime. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Okay. So let's see. What are you grateful for? And it always sounds so corny, but honestly, I am grateful for how my life turned out because it's not how I expected it to be, but it's so much better. That's really beautiful. Thanks. How do you impress yourself? By waking up every morning and actually getting dressed and saying, here I am. Let's do this. <laughs> I love it. And what would be your definition for leaving your impressivity? Hmm. I think if people can find the value within themselves, if I have played a small part in that, and to bring about change for themselves, that can spill over to communities and that can spill over to the world. If it's just a tiny sliver, that would be, be my goal for my own impressivity. impressivity. <laughs> Awesome. I love it. Thank you so much, Christine. It was a pleasure to speak with you. Oh, thank you, Alex. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Live Your Impressivity Show. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. Also, check out Christine's journals on her website, Journaling Through, and connect with her through her social media channels. If you'd like to find out more about business journaling, then you can join the Journaling Studio. This is a membership for growth-driven entrepreneurs who are looking to create impressive results with clarity, focus, and motivation. You can join for one month and then cancel anytime, create consistency for your business and your life. Until next time, stay impressive.